Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of T Minus 365, where I demystify Microsoft solutions for the MSP space. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a technical deep dive on the setup of Windows 365 for both the business and enterprise level plans. I'm not going to be covering any pricing or packaging in this particular video, but I'm planning to do that in subsequent videos here. Before I get into today's video, if you do want to see more content around Microsoft 365 and MSP space, be sure to subscribe. Getting into it here though, I wanted to start off with a quick comparison between the business and enterprise plan just because there is, from a technical standpoint, some considerations that you'd want to know before thinking about proposing this to your potential clients that might want to adopt this cloud PC solution. On the business side of things, it's a lightweight deployment, but with that lightweight deployment comes a lack of customizability including things like the inability to create your own custom images. You have to go ahead and use the images that Microsoft provides. So that means you do not get to package this with your apps that you want or any configuration or anything like that. That is something that you'd have to do out of box. The other consideration here is the hybrid discount that's available for the business plan that's not available for enterprise. That discount is available if you're running Windows 10 Pro on your base system. That means if you're running on a Chromebook, you wouldn't be eligible for that. And that's about a 16% discount on the actual licensing itself. With business, you're having to manually resize the images if you want to move up in CPU or, or storage or something like that, for instance, versus having that natively within the UI for you to customize. Your printer capabilities are limited because you don't control the network layer. And you're also looking at lack of support from universal print, things of that nature, which the enterprise level plan does have. All of the users are created as local admins by default, which could be very good or bad in a lot of scenarios, but I just wanted to point that out. On the positive side though, they are uh, natively joined to Azure AD and rolled into Intune as the MDM solution with the business plan as well as with the enterprise plan. You do not need Intune with the business plan, but I highly encourage that you adopt it in this particular regard because you don't have that a customizability of the images that you're applying to these cloud PCs. Lastly here on the prerequisite side, you know, you just have to license them with a prerequisite license. Most of you might use Microsoft Business Premium and a combination of the cloud PC license you would get from Microsoft Direct or with the CSP provider. On the enterprise side of things, it's a little bit more complex to set up just because you have to have an Azure subscription, you have to have connection line of sight with a VNet, to an on-prem Active Directory environment, whether that be your own local servers or hosted within Azure itself. Domain services with Azure AD are not supported at this time, but you can create your own custom images and upload those images. And it does also have the native resize support within that particular management center, which does allow you to scale upwards um, quite easily versus having to do all that behind the scenes and, and shift models with the licensing as you would on the business side of the house. So the prerequisites, I've kind of mentioned all of them here, including the licensing with the business plans. You also have to configure this hybrid identity environment and hybrid device join with Azure Active Directory Connect, which I'll be showing you briefly within this video, as well as some of the settings for the VNet and things of that nature. I'm going to start here, though, with the enterprise side of the house and briefly just go over the architecture so you have a, have a clear picture before we dive into the actual admin centers to set these things up. You're going to have your on-prem Active Directory and you're going to have the AD Connect already syncing into Microsoft 365. You have configured it for hybrid device join. From there, you're also going to set up this Azure VNet that's going to be hosted within an Azure subscription. And it has the necessary line of sight to that on-prem AD. So you have to have your firewall and IP addresses, DNS servers, everything like that configured correctly to have that line of sight to be able to then hybrid join these devices locally as well too. From there, you're working with an endpoint manager admin center to kind of configure all the policy settings, everything like that beforehand. You're also setting up that connection to verify that you do have correct line of sight to your domain controller. So you're um, basically setting up your VNet in endpoint manager admin center and you're creating your policies that you're using, which could include custom images and things of that nature as well as any compliance policies, you're creating your apps, PowerShell scripts, anything like that that you would like to do. So that way, whenever you license a user with a Windows 365 license within Microsoft, kind of kicks off this process to start a provisioning event 
and Endpoint Manager Admin Center. That's going to go ahead and start spinning up this cloud PC. And from there, whenever you actually provision that device, it's going to push that down into your local on-prem active directory as well too with a hybrid connection you have going on. And from there, when it's powered on, you're immediately going to get those apps starting to push down. So maybe your on-mem tool, your AV for that particular device, your PowerShell as well too if you would like that, as well as the uh, office apps. And those office apps don't need to necessarily be configured within the Endpoint Manager Admin Center. They're pre-configured on a lot of these images from Microsoft and they automatically sign users in and start OneDrive syncing as well too, which is pretty cool. So with that, I'm gonna pop into a environment right now so we can see more of this from the admin standpoint. Okay, so I'm here with an environment that has a mix of Microsoft 365 E3, BP, licensing, things of that nature. I just wanna show you a couple of the prerequisites, again, just for clarification. Number one, again, you have to have Azure AD Connect set up. It has to be syncing. It has to be doing that on a periodic basis of less than 60 minutes for this to be able to detect this and your configuration to go through okay when we set up the on-premise connection. And you do additionally have to configure it for the hybrid device join as well too. So I'm not gonna get into that because that, those are some prerequisites that I think that you should know already or can look elsewhere for resources but essentially that does need to be in place here for you to be able to have perform this particular connection on the enterprise level side of things. From there, what we're gonna to wanna to do is go into the portal.azure.com environment. You're gonna make sure you set up a new VNet, so a new virtual network, and this may be something where you're already hosting Active Directory in Azure and it's already set up here. If you're not, you're going to have to set up a new VNet and we need to change any type of firewalls or DNS servers or anything like that to have line of sight to the particular environment. So you're going to want to customize IP addresses and in my case I'm just using a hosted environment that's in Azure. So I'm looking at my NIC private IP and I'm associating my DNS servers with that so I have complete line of sight making sure I don't have any firewall rules that would block that as well either. Whenever you set this up in Endpoint Manager Admin Center, which I'll do here in a second, it will go ahead and do these checks for you to make sure that this is all looking okay from your particular virtual network standpoint. After this is done, and you think you have this correctly set up as well too, what you're gonna to wanna to do is go into the particular Admin Center and you're gonna make sure that you have the correct licensing associated to a user. So in this particular case, I have E3 to this user, as well as Microsoft or Windows 365 Enterprise uh, plan here as well too. Basic plan that's about 31 bucks a month for this particular user. I went ahead and set that up. Whenever you do, uh, you'll pivot into the Endpoint Manager Admin Center here. And you'll notice that you're gonna have in the devices section now, in Endpoint Manager Admin Center, a particular button for Windows 365. And it'll just be called provisioning as the main category. So when you click into here, you'll have an overview and it'll tell you about your connections and things like that. You click into all cloud PCs. If you've licensed a user and they are not yet uh, established yet, it means you haven't established the other prerequisites like the on-prem network connection, which we'll do here in a minute. It'll just say it's on hold or pending uh, for that time being until you get that connection established and a provision policy created as well too. So if we go in here to on-premise network connection, I already have one here established for the purposes of this demo. But when you go in here first, you're gonna create a connection and within here, you're gonna name this whatever you like. So um, I just call mine DC1. And in this particular case, it's gonna to wanna to accept something that is uh, available in my area. So it's gonna be called DC2, but it's really whatever you like there. You're gonna pick your Azure subscription here and you do have to have ownership rights over the subscription as this user who's logged in. We also get a message that says that you don't have permissions to access the subscription, so that's just an access control issue you can resolve. Outside of this, from there, you can select your particular resource group in which the VNet is located, and then you'll be able to select it from the dropdown here and your subnet as well, too, that you've created on the Azure side of things that provides that line of sight to your local Active Directory. 
From there, you're going to pick your ADDNS domain name, which is primarily just your default domain.com in a lot of cases. Could be custom uh, outside of that, but this is all it is saying here. AD username UPN, um, just one big piece to note here. This does have to be somebody in the local side of the house that has permissions to be able to join devices um, in that local Active Directory environment. If they do not, you will see this fail. It'll tell you like your username and password is wrong, but that's not really the case. It's really your permissions are incorrect and insufficient to perform these actions. So whenever you do this, uh, you'll go ahead and, and just type in their UPN here, and you'll type in their password, and you'll click on next, and you'll say, yep, okay, we're ready to review and create. And then it'll go into this running checks section, which is really this, this uh, watchdog service that Microsoft is using here to run through and basically make sure that it can access the DC, you have some permissions to create computers in that environment, you have AD Connect set up and working correctly so that it can actually perform these things over time. And this takes about 10 to 15 minutes before you'll actually see it change in state, whether it fails or it's successful. Um, and then you can dive in on particular errors that might come up as well too. And again, it'll tell you whether or not you know you have endpoint connectivity, which is kind of a, a signifier to say that your line of sight is incorrect. Um, you know you, you need to change either your firewalls or your IPs or something like that because that's not working correctly. Otherwise, it'll say can't connect to the AD service or your username and password's wrong, which is most likely um, as long as that user has been set up in that local environment making sure they have the necessary permissions to join computers to the domain as well. So this is one, again, where we had all the checks come back through OK. And this is where I was saying endpoint connectivity, where we can see that we can actually join them. And then you'll have all these other ones here that you can dive into. And they have links to semi-helpful articles if they fail for some reason. So after this is done, you're going to go into your provisioning policy section here and you're going to create a new policy. Within here, you can go ahead and state uh, the name, description, and on-premise connection. So we're going to use the, our first one here. We're just going to call this East US Users. Again, if you're not running a huge environment, the separation here is not really going to matter. But again, you want to pay attention to what images you're going to be assigning to these users as well, too. So you could use a custom image or a gallery image. And the gallery images here, they'll pull up. And you can see all of these here. And from there, you could also choose the custom ones. And I didn't show you the tab on there where you can upload one. But that's where you would upload a custom image and select it. So just be aware of those two options there and those sections. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this one here, click on next. And then you're gonna have a group that you're gonna to wanna to assign this to as well too. So what I particularly did is I just went ahead and just said that all my um, users that I assigned to are in the specific Windows 365 group. And you're gonna select that. And then you can go ahead and go for the review and create. And that'll go ahead and spin things up for you and you can create this as well I'm not going to create this because I already already did this one here as well too so we can click in and see more information about it it's really the same exact thing I just showed you guys there then on the all cloud PCs here once you have that provisioning profile or policy created and you have it accurately scoped to this particular user who is in a pending state it'll go into a provisioning state for you and it takes about 30 minutes for this to actually fully provision uh, for that user to be able to access their particular device in that case as well too. So with that, let's go ahead and pop into that end user experience so we can see what that is like as well too. Okay, so we're just going to do a light demo here of what the end user's initial experience is like. When you go to windows365.microsoft.com after you've been provisioned, you can go ahead and go through this quick little wizard that Microsoft gives you and then get right into going on and opening up a new browser, which is opening up this remote session to your cloud PC. The first time the user experiences this, they're gonna have this uh, grant that they're asked to do for their local resources, and then they'll have to go ahead and sign in with their credentials through 365. 
to get into the cloud PC. Once they do, it'll start this provisioning process if you've just now provisioned the actual cloud PC, which is pushing all these applications down as well too that are part of the image. And the cool part is, is obviously is it's natively signing them into things like Teams and it's working on signing into the OneDrive environment as well too. The one thing that I noticed that was a little bit wonky was that it came up with a prompt for Windows Defender to uh, basically mess with some of the settings within Teams. And this is something that you can compensate for with Intune if you really want to push this out so that users don't experience it that. But I'll put, publish that below in this particular video. So that was the only weirdness I saw upon initial boot. Everything else kind of worked as expected with OneDrive signing in and things like that. This is all I want to show for the enterprise side of things. We're going to pop back into the business side and then we're going to go ahead and finish that up with that end user experience as well too. Okay, so the final part of this video, I just want to show the business side of things here and the actual setup for that, which is really simplistic compared to the enterprise level side of things here. You just have to make sure that you license the user appropriately with one of the base level licenses that I mentioned at the first part of this video, like BP for instance, as well as that cloud PC license as well too. Once you do, it'll provision that device and it takes about 30 minutes to actually provision. If a user or yourself comes to windows365.microsoft.com, it'll show that it's in a uh, setting up PC state and it again takes about 30 minutes to complete. But also the cool part was again that there's native integration with Endpoint Manager and Intune so that if you do already have scope applications or policies or configuration profiles or anything like that, they'll automatically start to push out to that device here and you can immediately have those uh, installed as well too. Like in this particular case, I have this device that I set up as well from the cloud PC perspective. And then on here, I do have the managed apps like LabTech and Sentinel-1 already installed, and those were immediate when I actually provisioned this device. And then I also have it enlisted under compliance uh, profiles and actual device configuration profiles as well too. So it's a pretty cool interface just because of that native integration versus having to think about enrollment and things of that nature. So you can have a management layer immediately out of the box. And I would highly encourage that again because it doesn't support custom images. So it's un, there's not a great way to get your RMM tool out there, for instance, for management if you wanted to put those on cloud PCs. Now once I'm here, I can simply just click on open in the browser again, just like before with the enterprise and the experience is, is really just the same, where you click on your cloud PC, that's for permission for your resources that are local, and then it'll go ahead and connect. So. Those are a lot of the, the powerful experiences that you get and of course you can log in from any device on this as well too. And it'll sign in and keep your preferences and on all that. So it's a really cool experience after it's set up and the actual uh, bandwidth that you get like consuming YouTube videos or uh, video content where in general that would absorb that is, is a pretty fine experience as well too. The only other piece of advice I really want to give here is that while this natively signs them into their OneDrive environment and starts syncing all of those files and portals down to this cloud PC. It does not accommodate for the known folder moves that you can accomplish through the administrative templates within Intune. So it's another reason to adopt Intune. And I think it's more important in the cloud PC use case because out of the box, the user does have this native ability to reset the cloud PC uh, directly from this interface. And when they do that, it kind of just blows all the way the files and folders that were uh, on the, the personal side of things and the, the actual folders on their desktop versus the ones that are syncing to their OneDrive environment. The other cool part was that it does integrate with Windows Information Protection so that I can apply my compliance policies down to the device as well too to protect corporate data even through you know saving it to maybe your Gmail or something like that, which is pretty awesome that that initially pushed out as well too. That's everything I want to showcase for you guys in today's video. If you do have any questions or comments about Windows 365, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, like I mentioned earlier, like or subscribe if you want to see more content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space. Thanks guys, have a great day.